back to my channel my name is Stacy flowers and in today's video i'm going to be doing a book review of the great cities duology so if you're interested in that please keep watching i just finished the world we make by nk jemison maybe 20 minutes ago and i'm so super pumped about it that i needed to jump on and talk about it the first few minutes are going to be spoiler free because i don't want to ruin anything and then the last part of this review there will be some spoiler in order for me to tell you what the world we make is about i need to tell you what the city we became is about so we'll start with the city we became this is a book about new york being born what i like in the beginning of this book is she talks about because i actually think if you read the prologue it's enough to, is it the prologue? Where was that at? Is it? Okay, so in the prologue, it says, and this is this is the thing, like I knew I was gonna enjoy this book because I was like, is this what this is about to be about? So she says, if you do not learn the things I have to teach you, if you do not help, the time will come where you will fail and this city will join Pompeii and Atlantis and a dozen other cities whose names no one remembers, even though hundreds of thousands of people died with them. So what I love in the prologue that she does is she introduces the reason why we should care that cities need to become. And the reason we should care is because if we don't care, and specifically if this character doesn't care about coming into existence, it will cease to exist just like Pompeii and Atlantis. And if you know anything about history or geography, Pompeii and Atlantis are cities that when we talk about them now, we talk about them as if they were myths. We do not talk about them as if they were real. And in the city we became, and in this great city's duology, her premise is, what if those cities were real, but they didn't survive their birthing because their champions didn't survive, so they died. So then she takes that concept and she layers it on top of the idea of New York. And so the question that you're asking yourself throughout this whole book is, what if New York doesn't survive? And, and what does it take for New York to survive? And the way that she answers it is beautiful. The way that she takes you on a cultural immersion is beautiful. This is a book, like if you ever wanted to know what personification and metaphor is, this is a book that embodies personification and metaphor. I took so many notes. I loved it. Like, I will read this book again just so that I can be re-immersed into this world, just so I can re-experience, like, feeling like I am in New York, but not just like I'm in New York as a tourist or a visitor, but I'm in New York as someone that New York has given private access to be able to like see it see it i loved every single second of this book at this point i'm about to go into some spoilers because it's really hard to talk about the second book in the series without going into spoilers so the book i just finished so i read this in i read this at the top of the year i feel like i read this in february and because it was so good and it was so immersive like i wanted to take my time to read this because i just wanted to really digest everything that she shared in this book i read this um and i feel like what did i read this in a week did i read this in a week yeah i guess i read no maybe two weeks let's i think i read this in two weeks this book follows new york in that yes it survived and it was born but the enemy that it was fighting still exists and is trying to figure out how to conquer that enemy that not only threatens new york but ultimately threatens the world at large and so because it threatens the world at large new york has to figure out how to get other cities to help it defeat this enemy. And of course, other cities have issues with New York because it's New York, right? Paris isn't gonna be like, yeah, New York, let me help you out. London is not gonna be like, okay, New York, let me help you out. Other cities, in the same way that New York has a perspective and a vibe, other cities have a perspective and a vibe. And so in this book, we are going through what it looks like for cities to meet each other, the essence of a city to meet each other, to come together to defeat a common enemy. And it is so well done. It is so phenomenal. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Again, it's just, it's so culturally immersive to be in an N.K. Jemison world. Like I'm so happy that I was introduced to fantasy through her. 
I do, I'm now learning more about fantasy and I understand that this is an urban fantasy and like N.K. Jemison has like sub categories to so like sci-fi fantasy that she resides in. But like, I'm so happy that my first fantasy book was an N.K. Jemison book because I feel like my brain has been primed to be able to absorb any other fantasy book because this world that she creates, even though New York City is real, I'm still immersed in the way that N.K. Jemisin makes New York City a fantasy. And that, to me, probably has to be the hardest thing in all the land because how do you ma maintain the integrity that of New York while also still making it a fantasy that I can walk around in as a reader? She manages to do that. She manages to do that with New York and all the other cities that we meet in this book. I will say I gave this book five stars, this book I'm giving four stars. And a part of the reason why this is getting four stars is that even though it's immersive, even though it's culturally relevant and sensitive and it touches on all these beautiful things and it's using personification and metaphor and all oh, the other really big thing that I really enjoyed about this book is the use of metaphysics and quantum physics. I am a quantum physics lover. And so this is a big spoiler. The thing that happens in this book, if you understand quantum physics and if you have ever studied anything in the metaphysical space at length, you understand this theory called the observer effect. And the observer effect says that once something is being observed, it automatically changes the nature of the thing that's being observed. So say for example, like, if I, as a YouTuber, was going to come on today and talk about this particular book, the minute I know that people are watching me, the me that I was going to be before I knew that someone was watching me automatically shifts. That might not be a really good example, but the idea is, is that things change when they are observed. The more that thing is observed, the more it alters itself to the observer's perspective. So what I love, love, love about this book is it talks about that concept as a theme and it plays that theme out because the enemy in this book is so mad at New York. It's so mad at New York because it's so creative and it's so culturally rich and it's unpredictable and it has all of these nuances and it can't quite contain New York. So it's deeply upset with New York, which I even like that. Like, I feel like she was just, she's totally in love with New York because the way that she talks about how New York affects the enemy versus the way the other cities affect the enemy, even though those cities are equally as culturally rich. I love her little, I was like, okay, I'm with N.K. Jemison, you out here telling people that New York is the bomb and whatever. But um, the idea is that the enemy hates New York, but what you soon find out, what, what a major theme is, is that the enemy only hates New York because the way that New York is behaving is because it is being observed from an enemy that has already decided not to like it. And it's like, that's the theme of this book and this book is that perception is reality. And if you are going to look at something like the city of New York or yourself or anyone else for that matter, and I think that that's the reason why there's so many cultural nuances in this series, the way that you are perceiving something, the way that you are perceiving someone is shaping how that person is being in front of you, right? Like as much as we think that we are neutral and we are unbiased and we are not shaping what we are viewing, we are. And I think the greatest example of that is that like when I first moved to Chicago, everybody told me like, this is a dangerous city. It's super dangerous. You're gonna get shot, you're gonna get killed. Like be safe, get mace, get a knife, get a gun. Like this is a dangerous city in all the land. And it's like, when I got here, I, I lived downtown when I first lived here and it wasn't as dangerous as I thought, but I had been told that Chicago was super dangerous. So I moved around Chicago like it was super dangerous. And for the first four months that I lived here, I did not ride the public transportation because I was so afraid that I was going to get hurt on public transportation. But then, I guess I can put this down, but then one day my roommate was like, you can't use my stuff anymore. So I had to go to Target and I needed to use the train. So then I get on the train and when I get on the train, it's so much, and don't get me wrong, I'm not in any way suggesting that they're not harmful places here. But what I am saying is the level of harm that people told me that I was in before I got here was not the level of harm that I actually was in. Get on the train, go to Target, get back home. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not in as much danger as I thought. All of these things that I thought were incredibly dangerous and were going to take me out and were going to kill me. Turns out 
They were just a figment of my imagination. It was the way that I was perceiving the city became my experience of the city versus what the actual city has to offer. And I think she does a beautiful job in this book in this particular book, I think that that's the overarching theme is that the observer is affecting what's observed and life is just projecting back to you what you are suggesting that life is. And if you want it to be different, then you have to let go of your preconceived notions. You have to let go of your limiting beliefs. You have to let go of your prejudice, your bias. You have to let go of all of that stuff and let what is be. And I think that was done so well in this book right i would give this book four stars still even though that was done really well only because i wish 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 she could have kept it in its original intent which was to be a trilogy there is an element of this book was rushed and there are some themes that were so good that were dropped because as she talks about this in her acknowledgement, she did not have the creative capacity to turn this into the three book series that it was supposed to be. And I get it because when she was writing it, she was writing it when a lot of what she wrote about was reflected in reality. And I think that that could be hard for any artist, even N.K. Jemisin. So I totally respect her deciding to turn it into a duology, but as a reader, especially a reader of her work, but just as a reader fully immersed in this world, I could feel that it was truncated and I, I wish like oh my gosh like I wish it could have been as thorough as this one because this was a thorough read this was a beautiful read but it wasn't thorough because there were themes and concepts that were dropped that said I think that this duology is a love letter to New York if you have ever just wanted to learn more about New York and not the New York that we see on tv where it is glamorized and it's romanticized but like the real New York from the perspective of people who live there this is a series that's worth reading if you have any interest in geography this is a series that's worth reading if you have any interest in metaphysics mathematics quantum physics this is a series that is worth reading it is so beautifully done if you like the arts it's so beautifully done and if you just want to read a love letter to New York because that's that's how I would describe this These, this series is a love letter to New York in that love letters have that intimacy that closeness that like when you're reading it you can feel the passion of the writers but it also has a little bit of tea in there right she puts a little bit of stuff in there that you're like N.K. Jemison, why are you telling people your business or why are you telling people New York's business right like I'm not a New Yorker but as somebody who loves that city and thought that I knew a lot about that city I am reading this like oh my gosh really I had no idea that like these were the family secrets of New York right like that's sort of how it comes off a little bit and like when I think about a love letter or when I think about lovers writing each other it's like they're telling each other those truths that they can only tell one another and there's some truths about the city of New York that she reveals in here that I just think is really well done and it's really beautiful and if you're interested in that I think it's it's super super worth the read um and then the last thing that I will say about this especially about this is the other reason why it's four not five stars is because as a Chicago transplant, there is a nod to Chicago becoming a city in this book. And N.K. Jemison, I want to read you tell me about how Chicago becomes a city. I want like I can I can tell the book that potentially was supposed to be here was the book about and again this is a spoiler the book about Manhattan. So in the city we became spoilers right okay spoilers in the city we became new york is being born but it's not born with one champion it's born with the champion of new york and its boroughs and one of the boroughs is manhattan in this book manhattan is like there's more of manhattan's backstory in here and the way that you introduce manhattan's mother who knows that cities get born I need to know the rest of that story, N.K. Jemison. Why does why does his mom know? And the fact that there it seems like his family is from D.C., but Manhattan is really primed to be the champion of Chicago. Like I, I, I N.K. Jemison. Like I just I want to know more. This is the first time that I have read something, and I 
want to personally go write the fan fiction to finish that part of the story because that for example is a theme that i feel like is left undone like if what would it look like if cities were um legacies right because i feel like that is the the theme that's there between manhattan's mom knowing that he's a city and knowing about cities because it seems like this idea that cities are born is only known to the champions so she must be a champion or she must have a parental figure that was a champion at some point for her to know what it's like to have a son who's a champion and then just the idea that like New York will accept anybody who accepts New York so New York accepted a champion that became Manhattan not necessarily because he was from Manhattan, but because he wanted to be Manhattan. So it sounds like he's originally from DC, but he was born to be the champion of Chicago, but he decided to become the champion of Manhattan. And I want that story as a transplant Chicagoan. I want that story, but also as someone who is so immersed in the world of the great city's duology, I want that and I wish for that. And if ever my creativity strikes and tells me to write the fan fiction for that, I will. In no way do I think it will be able to do justice to what N.K. Jemison did, but maybe I can do a little short story. I can do my own little love note to Chicago and add it to the Great Cities duology. So for that reason, N.K. Jemison, I do kind of appreciate that you left it open. Would I be more satisfied if you closed it? Absolutely, but I do appreciate that it's open and there is space for other creatives to come in and fill in those blanks. That said, I highly, 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 highly recommend the Great Cities duology. It was beautiful, it was so well done. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I would love to know what you thought, if you read book one, if you read book two, what did you like, what didn't you like? I would love to know. So let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you very soon.